Hello again, welcome back to The Basement. My name is Doug. Today we're talking about TV antennas. Let's say you've decided to ditch your cable TV company or your satellite provider. You're going to cut the cord, so to speak, and put up an outside antenna. So you've put up your antenna, brought the lead down, hooked it to your TVs in the house, and everything is great. Except there's this one station that you either don't get, or maybe you get it, but it sort of comes and goes. It'll break up and you'll be watching something really interesting and then about that time it pixelates and freezes and then you realize you've missed something really important because of that. See? Just like that. Today I'll discuss why that happens and I'll also talk about how I combined two uh, TV antennas in order to solve the particular problem that I was having. First, let me give a shout out to a really useful website for people who are putting up antennas and receiving over-the-air broadcasts. It's called tvfool.com. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to click on that and visit the site. tvfool.com allows you to input your location, either your address or your longitude and latitude. And when you do that, it takes into account your location and the terrain around you, mountains and hills and things like that and it tells you which TV stations you should be able to receive with an antenna. You can tell it how high your antenna is, so it takes that into account as well. And it tells you which TV stations you should be able to receive, and not only that, but which direction they are based on from your location. In other words, what the bearing from your location is to the TV tower. That's useful, as we'll see later, when you want to decide which way to point the antenna, or in my case, the antennas. So I did this for my uh, location using tvfool.com, and here's the plot that I had. Uh, in, in my case, this will help illustrate the problem that I was having. Most of the uh, stations that I wanted to receive are all have their broadcast hours in the same general direction. So they're off in this direction, sort of southeast from me. And you can see uh, that there's a lot of them there. But there's one station. It's our local PBS station. And as luck would have it, it's not down in that direction. It's completely all the way over in the other direction uh, towards the west. And so I wanted to receive that one, but I also wanted to receive all the others because they're the major network stations and things like that. So if I pointed my antenna towards the, the clump of stations down to the southeast, then the PBS station was iffy. And if I pointed my antenna towards the PBS station, then the other stations were iffy. And if I kind of split the difference by putting the antenna somewhere in the middle, you know, and I would receive them both, but pretty much then they all sucked. It just depended on a lot of things like uh, the weather and, and cloud cover and, and airplanes flying over. And today I'm going to talk about how I combine two antennas to solve that problem. When you've got a, an HD TV signal that breaks up or pixelates, as, uh, as we say, uh, it happens usually for one of two reasons. First of all, either the signal just isn't strong enough you're either too far away, your antenna is not high enough, your antenna is not good enough, but for whatever reason, there's not enough signal to give you a decent picture. Now, in the old days of analog TV, this just resulted in what we called a snowy picture. And you could watch it. Uh, some people would wrap aluminum foil around the uh, rabbit ears on their uh, set, on the top of their TV set in order to try to make it come in better. Ultimately, that's, that was because of poor signal strength. And you could watch it, it was okay. But in these days of digital signals, when you don't have enough signal, because it's a digital system, the decoder in your television just doesn't have enough signal to work with, and ultimately it's unable to produce a good picture. With digital TV, you pretty much either get a great picture or you don't get a picture. Uh, there's not a whole lot of in-between. There's another reason that uh, digital TV signals break up sometimes, and that's called uh, multipath distortion. With multipath distortion, you may be receiving the signal directly, but it may also be arriving via another path. That is, it could be bouncing off of a distant range of hills or a mountain or off of a water tower or, or some other object. And so it's arriving via a different path, and therefore you've got the first signal getting there before the second signal. In other words, because the radio waves or the TV waves, that is, the TV signals, travel at a finite speed, one of them will get there before the other one does. These digital signals then cause something called destructive interference. And again, it comes down to a decoding problem. The TV just can't properly decode the digital signal. Now, in the old days of analog TV, this resulted in something called ghosting, where you saw sort of a faint outline of, of the original picture offset just a little bit. And again, you could live with it. Sometimes you could adjust things a little bit to help. But in the days of digital TV, 
we have pixelation and breakups and dropouts and things like that. So I didn't want either one of those problems. Uh, I wanted a good strong signal, but I was having some multipath distortion problems. And some people would say, well, why don't you just get a TV antenna rotator so you can turn your antenna towards the TV station you want from inside your house. In my case, there's the primary reason that I didn't do that is because our TV antenna comes into the house and then goes to three different televisions. And my wife and I might be watching two different programs at the same time. I want to watch something on PBS, for example, and she wants to watch a basketball game because she's a sports nut. Sports nuts are crazy. So that doesn't help us very much. If I'm watching something on one channel and she's watching something on the other, we have to turn the antenna back and forth. Somebody's not going to be happy. So we're right back to the original problem that we had. So what I did was put up a second TV antenna and I pointed one of them in the direction of all the stations down to the southeast, that is where the majority of the stations were, and I pointed the other one at uh, the PBS station out west. So now I've got two antennas, either one will pick up the station that I want. The, the uh, question is how do you actually combine those two properly so that you can bring them all down to one in one coaxial cable, feed them to your TVs. And here's what you do. Here's a diagram of what the new system looks like you'll see that there's a block that's labeled combiner. The combiner is nothing fancy. It's really just a plain old two-way splitter turned around backwards. A splitter can either split a single signal source to feed two TVs or multiple TVs, or it can combine two signal sources to feed one single TV. In my case, I'm using a two-way splitter to combine the two TV antennas, and outside where the uh, antennas are, it looks like this. Each antenna is attached to the combiner through a short length of 72 ohm coaxial cable, the same type of table that, the cable that goes from your antenna to the TV. Now make sure that the cables that connect the antennas to the combiner are the same length and the same type of cable. The length isn't that critical, but it's important that you use the same type of cable for each one. I won't go into the details as to why this is important except to say that it has to do with the velocity factor of the cable. But if you understand velocity factor of coaxial cables, then you don't need to be watching this video. I recommend RG6 cable for these cables as well as the cable that goes from the antennas to your TV. It has less loss than the RG59 that people often use. It's also important to keep some separation between the two antennas. Anywhere between two to four feet should be fine. So combining two antennas in this way completely solved the problem that I was having. We get excellent reception on all of the network channels which are down in the southeastern direction and we get excellent reception on the PBS channels that come in from the west. Uh, the antennas that I used, the ones that you saw in the uh, photo there, I got from Amazon. They're RCA TV antennas and one of those antennas costs about the same price as one of the panel antennas that you find for indoor use that hang on your wall. In my case that didn't work very well. Uh, it wasn't consistent and I, could, I had the same problem that I had before. So an outside antenna solved the problem for me. I had a great place to mount it on the chimney, and so that's what I decided to do. Um, it is worth noting that putting up two antennas and combining them in this way could still cause multipath distortion. That's because the antenna that points away from the other station could be pointing towards a water tower or a mountain range or a hill or something that causes a reflection, and you could potentially receive it via two different paths that way. Uh, it's less likely to happen if the signal that uh, you're trying to receive is, is nice and strong. Hasn't been a problem at all in my particular uh, situation. So that's worked out well for us. Uh, we get about 29 stations via the two antennas combined. They come in really well. No pixelation, no breakup. But it's kind of like Bruce Springsteen said in his song. Sometimes there's 57 channels and nothing on. Hope this helps. Have a good one.